Hello everybody, welcome back to re-edit. I'm your host Joanny Jean and for today's edit we are going to be doing an eye zoom edit in Premiere and we're finally heading back to Premiere after spending two weeks in Photoshop. I know but you know I had to get my graphic design on. You already know how it is. Um, so for this edit I actually did some research on it. Um, it's very similar to the edit that was used in XXX Tentacion's video for Sad. Um, I want to recreate that whole thing. Um, I also like was watching the video and it kind of reminded me of um, that So Raven. Like whenever Raven would have a vision, she would give like the eyes and then just zoom into her eye and just transition to another scene. Um, I'm gonna attempt to do that, to be honest. Um, every time I record like these intros, it's before I actually do the edit. So I have like no clue how it's actually gonna turn out. And thankfully so far, you know, it's turned out good. Um, for each one so far, but um, yeah, we're really just going in this blindly. Um, <laughs> I hope you all can stick around for this edit and let's just head right into Premiere. Hey, what's going on everybody? So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take this beautiful clip of Mr. Michael Brandy and um, basically I'm just doing some precision editing and um, Right here he blinks, so I just want that part cut out completely. Um, so I'm making sure to get that like right at the moment where he blinks. So I'm just double checking that to make sure it's the clip that I want, you know? And basically right now I'm going to cut out the part that I'm going to um, do the most work on for right now. So I'm gonna add a frame hold to that part because um, that's Basically, like this is a pretty short clip, so that's basically what's gonna like elongate the clip a little bit more. And that's gonna be like the main area where the transition's going to take place. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm going to go into effect controls on that selected clip I just cut out. And I'm going to go under opacity, there's an ellipses tool. And so basically that's gonna act like a mask for the clip. And I'm going to resize that ellipses so it fits over Michael's pupil. Uh, not his whole eye, I've tried that, and it just looks kind of wonky, um, so make sure it's around his pupil. So I made sure when I was filming to choose lighting that showed a little bit of his pupil. He has brown eyes, so it's a little hard to find, but when you zoom in, it's possible. And what I'm going to do next, this is really important, make sure you invert the mask so it covers only his pupil and not his whole face. So after we invert, we're going to make a duplicate of that clip that we had just um, made those changes on. And I'm gonna drag it above the bottom clip. And so basically what I'm gonna do, I'm going to take that ellipses mask off of the top duplicate, and then I'm going to add a cross dissolve to the end of that so that it can basically fade into the, the eye transition. It's gonna fade into the mask. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm just resizing and everything like that. So you see how the mask comes up towards the end. And I want that part to be a little bit longer. So I'm just doing a little bit of like resizing. I'm gonna make the clip a little bit shorter so that you can see more of the mask. And I'm even gonna elongate um, more of that, that bottom clip right there so you can see the mask a little more. I'm done with part one. Next, what we're gonna do, we're gonna select all of this and basically nest it, which basically compresses it all into one sort of layer. Um, this is to avoid glitches in Premiere. I just watched over that, made sure it was good. And so next, what we are going to do, we are going to go into effects and apply a transform effect. And then after that, we head to effect controls and we are going to adjust the anchor point. This part is pretty crucial because um, the, anchor port, the anchor point is basically what we're gonna base the rotation around. So we're gonna put that around his um, pupil that we had put the mask on. This is the center of the transition. And so this is um, pretty important that you get the two anchor points lined up um, directly over each other. It's gonna take some time um, because it is, it's not necessarily difficult. It just takes a little bit of patience and precision. In fact, it took me three tries to get this right. And so once I feel like those are pretty much over his pupil, then I will go into the next step. But here's a mistake I made. You see how in the timeline, 
the playhead is at the beginning of the clip rather than at the end where the actual um, eye zoom is going to be, yeah, don't do that. Make sure you put the playhead around to the point where you're about to put your transition, if that makes sense. Because of the zoom, everything is going to change and you'll, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so I'm gonna move the playhead and you see how like when I move the playhead, the anchor point shifts to below his eye. It was there at the beginning, but because we like, when I shot the scene, it, I had slightly moved in. So basically we're just gonna have to adjust the anchor point again. And I would encourage you to do this, um, to just not make this mistake because it kind of like set me off just a little bit. But um, here I am just fixing that. Well, attempting to fix it. It'll get fixed in the end. Basically right now what we're gonna do, we're going to animate the scale and rotation. And it's really important that you start right where the frame hold starts. Because where the frame hold starts, that's where the whole zoom effect starts basically, essentially. Um, so because we nested it, it's hard for me to find that point because it's all just compressed into one layer now, basically. And um, all of our previous progress, it's in there. It's just not being shown in the effect controls. So with the scaling, it kind of sort of depends on the resolution of your clips, uh, but I boosted mine to about 300. So it's a pretty like, you know, steep scaling transition right there. But don't worry, we're going to make it much smoother. I'm just playing it back so you guys can see um, how I'm working with this. And so what I want to do, I want to fix like those black, the black spaces so that there's not as much. Because unfortunately with this, um, there are just going to be black spaces. But honestly, in the final edit, you won't even really notice it. Right now, what I'm doing, I'm adding an ease out to both the starting keyframes on the scale and the rotation. When I expand the scale layer and effect controls, I'm able to um, adjust how smooth the scale and the rotation will be using these little levers right here. I'm honestly just playing around with it because I just want to minimize the black space. Um, and you're able to do that by playing around with these little levers. It's just, you just kind of sort of have to see it. You know what I'm saying? So just watch me play around with that for a little bit. The last thing you're gonna do for this part is that you're going to deselect the box where it says use composition shutters angle and basically use your own shutter angle. I used 180. And so that basically adds like a little bit of motion blur. Um, so you don't really notice the black spaces all that much. We're gonna right click nest to decompress everything we just did, but this is the last time we're nesting. Once again, to avoid glitches in Premiere. So basically the last thing we're gonna do, we're going to find where our transition starts. Once again, you know, since it's nested, we gotta sort of use that precision editing to find it. And once we find that point where the transition starts and the zooming starts, we're gonna go into motion and adjust the anchor point there so that it is in his pupil. This part gave me the most trouble. I've tried this effect three times already in a sort of trial and error type of way. And this last time actually really got me a little bit frustrated. You'll see why it's because the anchor point, I don't know, it just wasn't doing, it wasn't doing what it did. Um, but I basically fixed that by adjusting the opacity um, towards the end of that clip, transitioning into the other clip. And it doesn't make sense what I'm saying right now, but you will actually see it. Now I'm animating the scale on this once more, but this time the scale is going to basically scale right through his eye. And this is a lot of zooming. So um, Premiere is kind of giving me a little bit of glitching with that where like it would just lag a little bit. Um, but don't worry, keep going, you'll get it. And so you see the further I zoom, um, this is basically the center of the anchor point as best as I could get it. Um, and so you can see the corner of like his eyelid, it's, you know, light brown versus the black. I didn't really like that because it's gonna block, it's essentially just gonna block the next clip that I'm gonna put underneath it to transition into the other scene. So I fixed that by adjusting the opacity of it towards the end. 
I didn't like how fast that zoomed, so we're gonna adjust everything. I'm gonna add an ease out to the first keyframe on the scale and basically adjust like the lever so it zooms a lot more smoothly than that. That was very abrupt. And boom, that was a lot more smooth. As you can see, it's that last part that's really bothering me. So um, in this part, I just go to opacity and I put in keyframes so that it gradually fades out a little bit more. Yeah, so that's way better. All right, so here comes the next step. We're basically gonna drag this clip up and find our clip that we're transitioning into. So I had this clip of me just playing around. Um, honestly, I was watching Naruto right before I shot this, so you know, I felt it. I was feeling it and I'm gonna hold you. Right, so basically I'm just going to drag that clip of me underneath Michael's clip. Um, yeah, and I want it to overlap just a little bit so you can see me like in his eye. And I'm playing around with this so that I can show you how light my clip is. I it was supposed to be more of a darker clip, but that's as dark as I could have gotten my light. So I'm basically just gonna go into um, Lumetri Color and basically adjust the color so that it's a lot more darker and you can see more of a silhouette. I wanted that little piece of light so you can like actually see me, but you know, making it, making it more mysterious. So I'm really just playing around with the levels. You can, you know, play around and see what works best for you. But I'm going to add a transform effect on this and we are going to basically do the same thing we've been doing and adjust the scale and rotation because this clip is also going to rotate. In the tutorial I watched, he made it rotate 360, but I thought it was way cooler to adjust it 180, but I'll show you guys. So once again, we're animating the scale and this time it can take up the whole clip. I'm just showing you what that would look like, just adjusting the scale. And I thought that looked pretty good just by itself. But right now we're going to add some rotation into that. Like I said before, in the tutorial I watched, he rotated it to 360, but I thought it looked way cooler adjusting it to 180, so I would end up sort of upside down. Here go these black spaces again. I absolutely hate them. So basically I'm just sort of like adjusting keyframes and making sure that um, we see less black space. Um, and in this version, I did like three versions of this. In this version, I was actually able to manage to get um, no black spaces whatsoever. So that made me really happy. <laughs> I'm gonna add an ease out to the beginning of both of these keyframes and adjust the levers so that it's way smoother. Okay, so after I basically adjust everything and add it to my liking, I am going to add a song. This song is from TikTok, so I'll be sure to credit it and everything. Um, but yeah, here's actually the final clip. Thanks for sticking around. I hope you guys enjoyed that edit. I'm not even gonna lie, that was stressful. Um, <laughs> I did not feel any peace doing that. Um, but I would absolutely try this again, um, probably with better equipment, um, maybe an actual slider. Um, yeah, things like that. Um, I use my own camera to record these. I do have like another camera, um, but it's sort of hard to just do it on your own, especially when you have like one tripod. I have, I have this tripod. It's much smaller and it's actually so bad like I, I actually hate this tripod because it does that literally um it's very flimsy it, i think it's meant to like wrap around things so that it's supposed to be like on the go like it's versatile it's trash basically is what i'm saying i got it at walmart um but yeah i would definitely try this again and i hope you all try this too i hope this inspired you for any future projects that you have coming up but without further ado that's the end of this video um, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to UNF Spinnaker T.
TV. Gonna head over to Instagram to follow my account at joe.chella. And also please be sure to follow UNF Spinnaker TV at UNF Spinnaker TV. And that is the end of this video. I will see you all next week.